الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله we're reading from Sunan Ibn, Ibn Majah the, the first chapter which is the book of the Sunnah and hopefully in the future we'll be able to sit down and really go through some of the shurahat some of the explanations of the ulama but right now we're just per surveying these hadith and trying to gain some basic benefits and fawaid about our religion and this is another beautiful hadith which shows us the importance of Ahl Sunnah and sticking with Ahl Sunnah and recognizing Ahl Sunnah قال حدثنا محمد قال حدثنا محمد بن بشار قال حدثنا محمد بن جعفر محمد بن جعفر قال حدثنا شعبة عن معاوية عن معاوية بن قرة عن أبيه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تزال طائفة من أمتي منصورين لا يضرهم من خضلهم حتى تقوم الساعة Ahabatif Allah, this hadith is so important. This is a hadith where the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, A group of my ummah will continue to prevail and they will never be harmed by those who forsake them until the hour begins. This lets us know what Ahabatif Allah. The Ahl Sunnah will prevail. They're going to be there no matter what. Even if individuals of them from amongst them are harmed. Individuals of, from amongst them are killed. Individuals of, uh, from amongst them are silenced. There won't cease to be a group from amongst my ummah, which is clearly on the truth. So Ahl Sunnah is going to be there. It doesn't matter who's trying to refute them, who's trying to say they're really not Salafi, they're really not from Ahl Sunnah, who's abandoning their masjid. That doesn't matter because Allah will give them victory if they're truly on the Sunnah. Allah will grant them success and victory if they're truly on the Sunnah. And that makes it very important for us to understand who Ahl Sunnah is, to know some of their characteristics, know that they believe in the ghayb, know that they spend from their wealth in righteousness, know that they adhere to the Quran, they tamasik bi kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the methodology of the salaf of this, un, uh, this ummah. Know that they follow the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said, khayran nas qarni thuma alladheena yalunuhum thuma alladheena yalunuhum that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the best people is my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. Ahl Sunnah is those who follow them. Ahl Sunnah follows the Sabeel al Mu'mineen. Ahl Sunnah is the one who atesimu bi hablillahi jami'an wa la They adhere to the rope of Allah, which is the Quran and the Sunnah, and they don't divide. So they don't seek to divide. They strive every which way to keep Islam and peace between Ahl Sunnah, even if they differ on a particular issue, even if they differ on the particular shaykh or this, but Ahl Sunnah is striving to keep together. They're not the ones who quickly rush to make tabdi of everyone who doesn't agree with them. They're not the ones who make takfir who, with everyone who disagrees with them. They're not the ones who even bring up arms and attack everyone who disagrees with them. La. Those are the sifat of the khawarij. Those are the sifat of Ahl Bidah, Ahl Sunnah. They will be zahirin al haq even if the people try to harm them. And in another narration, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, A group of my ummah will continue to adhere steadfastly to the command of Allah. And those who oppose them will not be able to, uh, will not be able to harm them. So it lets us know Ahl Sunnah will not really be harmed. Their honor, their integrity will be attacked, but Ahl Sunnah will continue to prevail. The Sunnah will continue to go forth with or without us. And may Allah bless us to be from Ahl Sunnah. Because we don't know. A lot of times we claim this. We hope and we pray and we strive. And we become weak. Because we become weak in Iman. And we become weak in our minhaj. Yes. And we become weak with that. With sinfulness it becomes weak in your Aqidah. It affects your Aqidah. And I've talked about this before in past lectures. How this happens. How does those things actually affect your Aqidah? They do. There's a relationship. But Ahl Sunnah will prevail regardless. So no matter who's making Hajar of you, who's claiming you're not from Ahl Sunnah, Al Ibra bi Haqaiq Laysa bi Musamiyat, the proof of something is in its substance, not in, it's in its reality, not in its name. 
Not in the name, just because you call yourself Salafi, just because you call yourself from Ahl Hadith, just because you say you're from Ahl Athar, just because you say you're from Taifa to Mansura, just because you say you're from uh, 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 Ahl Sunni with Jama'ah, whatever. All those names come from the Sunnah. But that doesn't mean that that's the reality of your practice. So strive your best to be of those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help them and who لا يضرهم من خاذلهم ولا من ولا من يضرهم حتى حتى تكون صعب. Be from those. Be in the Allah. May Allah bless us to be from them. I mean, here's another hadith. This is Hassan, graded Hassan. It's also in Sunan Ibn Majah because these are the hadith I'm reading from in the chapter. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is in the hadith of Abu Inaba al Khulani who said. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah will continue to plant new people in the religion and use them in His obedience. SubhanAllah, that's a powerful hadith. Because we witness that. We see that people who are not even Muslim before, Allah guides them and they become a source of guidance for others. It doesn't matter your country where you're brought up. You could be from Pakistan, you could be from South Africa, you could be from New York, you could be from Saudi Arabia. That is not the ibrah, that is not the, the main point, that is not going to be necessarily the source of guidance, but it's whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favors. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides is guided. Best, he's guided. May Allah bless us to be guided. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. So it shows us the importance of obedience to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that that guidance from Allah will come to his servants from all over who will call people to obedience to Allah who will call people to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and I want to end by, with one other hadith this is a sound hadith as well and this is very important and this shows us that Ahl Sunnah is a people of knowledge there are people of ilm, ahl hadith, as, as many of the great mufassirin or the great imams of hadith, al shurahat of hadith, where they explained, like Imam Bukhari and, and uh, Shaykh Bukhari and well, other than them, Kathir, Ibn, ha Ibn Hajr, and others, they said, when, they, when asked about that hadith, when they explained that hadith, they said, if it is not ahl sunnah, then I don't know who it is. This is the hadith that we read before. La tazal taifatum min ummati zahirin al haq That hadith. That we there won't cease to be a group from my nation uh, that that continues to be on the truth. So Imam Bukhari and, and others said, if if it isn't Ahl Sunnah, if it isn't Ahl Hadith, then I don't know who it is. So listen to this Hadith. Amr ibn Shu'ayb narrated. His father said, Muawiyah stood up to deliver a sermon and said, Where are your scholars? Where are your scholars? For I heard the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say the hour will not begin until a group of my Ummah will prevail over the people and they will not care who lets them down and who supports them. So again, the habit of Allah, the more you adhere to the Sunnah, you will find more opposition and there will be more deterrence and there will be more trials and difficulties and tribulations. More people may abandon you. That's why you want to make certain that you're on the sunnah. You don't want people to abandon you and you're not on the sunnah. But you want to make sure that you're on the truth bi'idnillah. And it only comes through ilm, uh, uh, beneficial ilm. It only comes through following the hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa who said, Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them understanding of the religion. It only comes from that by seeking to better your Iman, listening, studying, memorizing, to help your heart and practicing. Most importantly, important, or along with all of that, is practicing because you can memorize. I, I know many people who've memorized a lot. And some of them don't practice. And those who even benefit from ulama, but they involve themselves in the major sins. 
And that was due to the lack of practice. So Ahlul Sunnah is combining all of those attributes. It's the knowledge and the practice and the understanding. It's the memorization. It's the practice and it's the fiqh. It's the understanding. Man yiridallahu bihi khayran yufaqtahu fiddeen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him understanding of the knowledge. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be from Ahl Sunnah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.